Mel Kuyper Jr. joins me on the Goodyear Hotline. Mel. Max. Oh, see, this is a, <laughs> How you doing? This is a get around, around uh, anyone as we approach the NFL draft. This is a get, Mel Kuyper Jr. Mel, well, we haven't turned the calendar over to April yet, Max, so we're good. You know, yeah. It still says yeah, March, yeah, yeah, so yeah. We're, we're, we're Then I won't okay. be able to get you anymore. No, um, no chance, Max. <laughs> Mel, <laughs> just kidding. Mel, I need to talk to you about my New York football giants. This is a need, a need situation. Um, normally, I don't think it's wise to draft for need, right? Take the best available mm-hmm. player. There's so many positions on a football team. Just take the best talent. In this case, what I see the Giants really needing here is and I, you can always look at the O-line with the Giants because they can't get that right. They need a dynamic pass rusher. They have a lot of good defensive players, even up front, but not edge rushers who make a difference. You have in your mock draft the Giants taking an edge rusher out of Michigan with their 11th pick. Is that because of need or is that the best available player? Well, it depends who you speak to about best available player. I, for my rankings, it would be a little rich, Max, but for a lot of people, it would not be. Uh, they call about safe picks. We always get that at who has some issues or concerns and who doesn't have as many. That's what sometimes you do it that way. You eliminate the, the concern that could cause a bust or the bust factor. And for Quiddy Pape, you say, well, he wasn't as productive from a sack production standpoint, but he plays fierce. He's got tremendous talent. And if you coach him properly, the attitude's there, the ability is there okay so I think that's where coaching comes in they have coached before their name for a reason in the NFL and Quiddy Pay has all the other intangibles and physical athletic prowess that you need Max to translate all that and can do more sack production once it gets into the league now can it be a 10 to 12 14 sack a year guy can it be 7 to 10 uh, yeah I think you'd, you'd probably argue more 6 to 10 7 to 10 now is possible but you never know for a kid who has that type of ability like I said he has freakish talent and that's something you can't coach or teach now you get into technique and all that he has enough bend he's got the versatility to play up or down yes at 11 if you say would it be a slight reach based on ranking from people i've spoken to in my rankings yes would it be a pick that you could argue makes sense yeah you could what about certain any chance that he's there at 11 Oh, he'll be there. I, I think Sir Patrick Sertan the second will be there uh, unless uh, Dallas takes him. I have Dallas going. Though. I say be there. He could. When you say corner, could he be? Yes. And it's, uh, there's a difference of opinion on corners. Right. Sertan. Caleb Farley would have been the pick at some point in that area and still could be. I can do the 49ers at 12, depending upon medical on the third surgery. That's a back, second one to the back. He had a 2017 uh, ACL, so that's a durability concern there. Patrick Sertan had going to Dallas. Dallas could go a couple other directions. They don't have to go corner at that point. So, uh, yeah, could he be there? Yes, he could be. Just because I have a mock to 10 doesn't mean it's, that's going to happen definitively. Uh, when you're at 10, you could be at 11. So, yeah, there's a, a, a put it this way. He, there's one, two of those top three corners, really top four, because Greg Newsom the second belongs in that discussion. But if you want to just keep it to Patrick Sertan, Caleb Farley, and J.C. Horn from South Carolina, uh, you can pretty much guarantee that two of those three will be there, and maybe all three. Now, before I move on to the lowly Jets, because I'm a Giants fan, and any good uh, sports fan knows if you root for a, a team in a two-team city, you must hate the other team. And I do. I do hate the Jets, even though it's hard to hate them because they've been so bad for so long. But uh, at any rate, I'm not crazy about the fact that they have the number two overall pick. Nevertheless, they do. And uh, all right, we'll get right to the Jets. Why not? Um, I, I, look, I'm, there's only one Mel Kuyper Jr. The rest of us, I didn't, how much Zach Wilson did I watch, really, right? So Justin Fields was the name, and, and I, I, hey, he's as good as, uh, as uh, Trevor Lawrence, and, um, and Justin Fields very impressive to me. But I got to tell you something, Mel, and I know you still like Fields as the second-best quarterback. I've been watching a lot of Zach Wilson video recently. Oh, my God. This guy is uh, – you have to tell me why you like Fields over Wilson because in Zach Wilson, I see incredible talent. Like, I, I think the Jets would be nuts to pass up on him at two. Why do you still have Fields over Wilson? Well, because Fields has, I think, a more – or as certainly you're talking about talent. How about Justin Fields? I mean, he runs in the 4-4s. Four He's got outstanding size, outstanding athletic ability, outstanding arm strength, passion for the game, studies the game. Uh, yeah, people say, well, he had the two sub-bar bar games. How about, how about 2019 when, when Zach Wilson looked like a fifth-round pick and Justin right. Fields was playing like the number one pick in the draft? People kind of forget about that conveniently. Uh, it's all about this year when you played a bunch of opponents that, that Justin Fields would have been equally as impressive or more impressive. Keep in mind, 
You know, it doesn't actually put somebody in somebody's face. They're going to shoot the threes, okay? You put right. them open, wide open, they're going to hit the threes. That's what it kind of boils down to. You know, Coastal Carolina game, second half, they were shut out. Look at the look at the amount of inferior opponents, one after another. And I'm not taking anything away from Zach. Zach Wilson moved way up. And I'm not, it's nothing to criticize him. You just have to say, this Justin Fields criticism, to me, I get it. Because if you saw Indiana and Northwestern games, he'd look like anything but a first-round pick, let alone the number two pick in the draft. I get all that. But it's two games going to ruin a career, especially in a COVID season with all the interruptions and all the uncertainty. And he didn't have Olave for that Northwestern game. And he went up against Mike Hankwitz, who's a heck of a coordinator. But with all that said, they still you know, win the game. So, again, and they move on. They play Clemson as an underdog, and they win that game because he was the difference maker and with all the pressure on him. So I see the talent with Zach Wilson. There's no question. I think he will be durable in the NFL. He did have the shoulder. Uh, he's not that big. And he did play against, as I say, very much subpar competition. And that, that's where Fields, to me, gets the edge where, you know, you flip them, you put Justin Fields at BYU, put, put the Wilson at Ohio State, would the same outcome have happened? I don't know. 